hello guys uh, very good evening sorry for the delay as i was in the meeting with the within the office and uh, yes welcome back and let's start so in the last session we discussed about the aws cloud computing and in that we have discussed about why we are going into the cloud computing apart from that on premises environment what is the necessity of going into the cloud computing can anybody uh, describe me why we are going with the cloud computing <clears throat> Yes, any responses from your end? Why we are going with the cloud? Guys, whoever has the last session, can you please uh, raise your voices? Hello, am I audible first of all? Yes, yeah. Can you tell me uh, why we are going for the cloud? What is the necessity of going into the cloud uh, computing? So previously we discussed about this and what is a cloud computing and uh, what are the benefits of the cloud computing. These are the things that we have discussed in the last session. And in now in this in today's session we are going to discuss about types of cloud computing, or else types of cloud, and later <clears throat> services that a cloud cloud will provide. Services of cloud. Okay, these are the things that we are going to discuss in this session. So what are the different types of cloud that we are having? And uh, among those, under which cloud, which cloud category AWS will come? Okay, that we will see now. So, first of all, what is meant by cloud computing? Cloud computing will provide the IT services to the end customers without the intervention of any servers, any servers and networking things. So, if you have the internet connectivity, that's more than enough to access your cloud systems. So, this is a cloud computing concepts. Types of cloud we are having public cloud and the second one is private cloud and the third one is hybrid cloud these are the three types of cloud <clears throat> that we are having now when you coming back to the types uh, like public cloud what is meant by public cloud so a public cloud uh, is a type of cloud infrastructure that can can be accessed over the internet by anyone so not only you not only me so anyone can access the resources of that particular cloud infrastructure. So for example, the cloud that provides, the cloud that provides IT services, <clears throat> IT services over the internet to any customer, any customer, if they have a, if they have an account through any customer with an account. If you are having an account, you can have this uh, cloud. Okay, you can, you can create your account and you can access the services that are provided by the cloud. For example, if you want to have AWS as a cloud, what are the services does AWS provide? AWS provides VPCs, EC2 instances, <clears throat> databases, and uh, whatnot. Uh, for example, uh, PASS, Platform as a Service, like uh, Elastic Beanstack, Elastic Beanstack, Lambda. These are all comes under the Platform as a Service. And databases also comes under the Platform as a Service. EC2 will come under the Infrastructure as a Service. And finally, CloudWatch. CloudWatch will come under the so software as a service. So these are the different types of uh, services that are provided by AWS. If you are going with the Azure, the naming terminology is going to be changed. They are going to provide VNet or else I will go with the resource group. VNet, virtual network. <clears throat> here we are calling it as VPC. In Azure, it is called as a VNet. And then here we are calling it as an EC2. In uh, Azure, it is called as virtual machines, VMs. And they are also providing the databases and Active Directory, and so on, so. Okay, they are also providing the developer tools, they are also providing the developer options and DevOps options. There are so many things that are provided by the Azure. So now what is the main thing that you need to have to access these clouds? Anyone can access it. You can have uh, your account, I can have my account. So the only thing that you need to have here is, you need to have an account and you need to have the internet. If you are having the uh, account of the cloud of that particular cloud, either it might be AWS, Azure, GCP, Oracle, Alibaba, like that, you are having so many types of clouds. 
if you are having an account of that particular cloud and if you are able to access the internet then you can deploy your own cloud services for example <clears throat> so if you can see here uh, this is my aws cloud or else aws free tier account which i am having right now let me log in into the console Okay. So see, I am having a server running. Okay, within fraction of seconds, what I can do, I can deploy a software, or else I can deploy a web service. For example, uh, where is it? Here, there is a test server. <clears throat> Let me start the server, and I am going to uh, implement an HTML page. It is very simple. Let us ask the Chat GPT to to give us an uh, HTML page for us. generate an HTML page for uh, user sign in the request and uh, it should be professional. Okay. So it is going to generate an HTML page for us. Okay, just for the user sign in, that's it. And now we can give this HTML page on our server. For example, there is a server over here. Let me log on to that server. <clears throat> this is how simple we can log into the server. And then what we can do, cd slash, oh sorry. Pseudo SU hyphen okay and then uh, nano slash war www html uh, index nginx dot html so I'm just going to simply remove this page and I'm going to paste the page which is generated by the chat GPT <clears throat> okay just I'm going to give like this okay and save it and then what you can do you can go back to us like just give me a second system ctl stop nginx and system ctl start nginx done so now if you can see here so within uh, a fraction of seconds i have built uh, an web page and i deployed on the nginx and you can see here we are able to get the sign in page okay just like this okay how much time it took it just took roughly five minutes to generate the page and i am able to access that so <clears throat> with the cloud infrastructure whenever you are having the cloud infrastructure it is very easy for you so you are having an internet so through internet only you can access the servers and i am having an aws account so i can create the it services whatever i require so this is these are the different types of uh, public clouds that we have one is aws and the other one is azure now what is meant by a private cloud the cloud which is maintained by an organization okay organization spelling mistake okay organizations to provide the IT services to their customers. Okay, these are like your on-premises environment. Example is on-prem uh, environment. So, or else you can go with the private cloud also. So, what I will do? What is a, a private cloud? If you if you ask this, here you can clearly it is going to mention you what is a private cloud. See that. A private cloud is a type of cloud computing environment dedicated to a single organization. So it is a, it is dedicated to a particular organization offering many of the benefits of public cloud such as scalability, flexibility and self-service. But within the context of enhanced security and privacy control, here are the key characteristics, I mean, uh, benefits of the private uh, environment, private cloud, dedicated environment. So as the public cloud is having a shared environment, so AWS, so, so you, if you are having an account, AWS provides you IT services. 
excuse me if my org my organization is having an aws account it can provide the services to my organization your organization is having an aws account it will provide the it services to your organization likewise if you are having a public cloud it is a shared resource okay shared services will be there but when you come to the private cloud you will having a dedicated resources a dedicated environment the infrastructure and resources are used exclusively by one organization unlike public cloud where resources are shared out among the multiple tenants private cloud is isolated from the another organization try to remember this this is very important private cloud or uh, private cloud is isolated from the another organization or other organizations okay so this is very important a private cloud is isolated from the another organization where it is going to come i will tell you in the later on time and the next one what saying customization organizations are uh, can tailor the private cloud environment to meet their specific needs including hardware networking and storage enhanced security and compliance why because it is only used by the single organization they can implement their own security policies on premises and hosted and scalability and flexibility so you can increase the number of resources or also you can decrease the number of resources it is in your hand only so it's it's, it's totally benefitable so but uh, there is a problem with the private cloud that it can be utilized only for a single organization it cannot be go beyond the organization okay so this is the main concept of your private cloud so if you see here examples of private cloud you can get a wide variety of examples of uh, private cloud okay here you can clearly see this there are the various industries use the private cloud vmware v cloud suit okay and then you can go with the uh, microsoft azure stack okay it is also one of the best example so like that you are having so many different types of uh, uh, what i can say <clears throat> private cloud or uh, private cloud implementation is there so this is the main use case of your private cloud which can be used only for your organizations but not for your but not for the another organizations it is not going to be shared and the next one is hybrid cloud what is a hybrid cloud the combination of combination of private cloud and public cloud is hybrid cloud so which means that i can host uh, a web server in the public cloud and i can have my database in the private cloud so i can connect this public cloud with my private cloud so this is called as an hybrid cloud so if you see here uh, what is uh hybrid cloud with example so don't take this as an uh scenario or else this is this as an uh case study here so it is one of the thing that i just want to introduce to you like chat gpt or else you can access your own methods also see hybrid cloud is a cloud computing environment that combines the use of public cloud services and private cloud infrastructure on on premises data center this integration allows for data and application to be shared between them which means that it's a combination of public cloud and private cloud which i have just said you okay so this is the best real time example a retail industry a large retail chain the retail chain uses the hybrid cloud approach by keeping the critical point of sale systems and customer data on the private cloud you cannot expose the customer data to the, into the public cloud why because it can be accessed by n number of people so i cannot expose that to the uh, public cloud so what i want to do i want to keep the customer data in the private environment meanwhile i can uh, meanwhile it leverages the public cloud services for key clouds during the sales events if you are having any sales event so you can keep your customer data but you can expose your your uh, what i can say products so if you want to expose your products it should be on the public and if your customers are there you want to store, keep them secret you can have the private so this is how uh, your hybrid cloud will be helpful these are the different types of cloud environments that we are having so one is the public cloud private cloud and hybrid cloud so uh, aws will come under will fall under the public cloud okay so if you want you can come you can combine your aws to the on premises environment also <clears throat> okay so understood about this any questions here guys any more questions 
Any questions? Hello. Yeah, open stack is also. Okay, cool. So as there are no more questions, I will go ahead. And the next one is what are the services that are provided by the uh, cloud? So here we are mentioning the services provided by the cloud. So the services are IAS, PAS and SAS. So what is meant by IAS? Infrastructure as a service. Intra as a service. So what is the PAS? PAS means platform as a service. And the next one is SAS. SAS means software as a service. Okay, these are the different services that you are having. And if you can see the diagram, you can clearly understand what is IAS, PAS, and SAS. So cloud uh, services versus on premises. Look at this diagram. You can clearly understand what is what. Uh, <clears throat> okay. This. Or else I will go like this. Uh, IAS versus PAS versus SAS versus on prem. If I go with this, here you can clearly check out what are the differences between the things. Look at here. Yeah, this will be a better uh, explanation. So whatever the blue blue things are there, you have to manage, which means that the system administrator or the employees has to manage this. So what, what we have to manage in the on-premises, on-premises means in your company environment, in your company environment, you have to, first of all, if, if I want to install an application, so which type of servers are beneficial for you? So you have to select the servers. How much storage that you require, you have to select it. How much networking, like what is the network capacity, whether you want the 1 GBBS of broadband or 10 GBBS of broadband or legal lines, you have to decide it. Which type of virtualization software you need to install, VMware or Citrix or else any XYZ or virtualizations that you want to install, that again, you have to decide it. Later on, uh, if once you purchase the service, which type of operating system that you need to have, whether you need to have a Linux operating system or Windows operating system. So which type of application that we are using? Either we are using a node, node type of applications or .NET type of applications, then we have to go for the Microsoft. If you are using Java or Python, you can go with the Linux. So which type of operating system that you have to select manually, middleware. So once uh, you have selected that, I will go with the Java related applications. What is the runtime that you need to go with? Like Spring Boot or else uh, any, any another Java related application that you have to decide. And later on, applications and data so everything has to be managed by you but when you come to the infrastructure as a service <clears throat> so here networking storage servers and virtualization you don't need to worry about uh i have to have a server so which type of server what how much amount of ram how much amount of cpu so how much i have to pay these are all things you don't need to worry and server monitoring you don't need to do so server will be key up and running uh 24 by 7 so only thing that you have to monitor here is Due to heavy peak loads, uh, the server might might go down. At that particular time only, you need to monitor your servers. Apart from this, you don't need to monitor your servers. Your servers will be up and running. And you don't need to worry about the storage. If you want to increase the storage, within minutes, you can increase the storage. And if you uh, networking type, like if uh, there is any disconnection, there won't be any disconnection in the servers. Why? Because all the data centers are equipped with the networking configuration. Virtualization, 
so you don't need to you don't have the headache of selecting the virtualization whether we have to go for vmware citrix or hypervisor so any uh, which type of uh, virtualization i have to select obviously we'll have the virtual missions only so you don't need to worry about the virtualization also so what you have to worry in the infrastructure as a service so here <clears throat> if i have to uh, compare this uh, services so let us take an uh, example like you are you are about to construct a home okay so you did not hide a contractor okay you did not hide a contractor so you, you yourself wants to construct your home so for that you have to check for the labor you have to check for the uh, dealer who provides you the cement for the low cost you have to check for the bricks you have to check for the sand everything you have to do manually by yourself okay if the contractor is not there but there is an advantage so the advantage is that you can construct your home as you like as you wish okay so this this particular room should be like this like that you can construct your home so <clears throat> this on premises will be like that only so which type of servers i have to select how much amount of ram that i need to have how much amount of storage that i need to have uh, networking so full flexibility will be there for the uh, admins but when you come to the virtualization like on premises environment or sorry, from the on premises to infrastructure as a service environment there your flexibility will be reduced to some level why because here you cannot select the uh, server okay so here you can select either you can go with the dell server or hp server or else any another server but here when you come to here you did not choose the server specifications obviously so whatever the servers that are provided by the uh, what i can say that are provided by the uh, cloud service provider that you have to use so here when you come to the IIS infrastructure as a service. It is like hiring a contractor for you. you have you have a plan for your home and you just hire a contractor. So the contractor has to completely develop the home and ha he has to hand over it to you. Okay. So now the contractor is there. Okay. So this IIS is like a contractor. So you don't need to worry about the labor and you don't need to worry about the cement, bricks, and sand. You don't need to worry about your construction per point of view. But you have to worry about the appliances okay you cannot ask a contractor where is the refrigerator where is the ac where is the fan where is the uh, some 60 inches or 52 inches tv you know, where is the home theater like that you cannot ask him so you have to ask him to construct a home for you so if you ask him to create an applications for you appliances for you he will not do that in the same manner here also he will give you the infrastructure just uh, the up to virtualization he will like ias will provide you that and apart from that, which type of operating system that you want to install, whether you want to go for Linux, Ubuntu, like Red Hat, uh, Red Hat, Ubuntu, SUSE, or else, uh, what else we have? Uh, we have like CentOS, which type of operating system that we have to select Windows. So that we need to select it. And you need to select the middleware, middleware or else Java, Python, whether I need to install Java or Python, which type of language will my application will accept that you have to select it. Later on, application and data is your responsibility. So this is about your infrastructure as a service. So up to infrastructure, they will maintain. They will maintain in the sense public cloud will maintain up to the infrastructure. But once the infrastructure is given to you and re remaining all the things you have to manage. <clears throat> and the next one is PAS. PAS means platform as a service. What is this platform as a service? So this platform as a service is like a service apartment. Okay, so when you purchase or else when you rent a service apartment, they will give you bed, TV, whatnot. They will give you all the appliances. How to use them and how to access them, that you need to understand. In the same manner, platform as a service is also uh, like they are going to provide each and everything. So which type of, you have to select it. Anyways, for example, I'm going with the Elastic, Elastic Beanstack. It is one of the platform as a service example. So for example, I will go with Elastic <coughs> Beanstack. So here you don't need any servers. If you are going with the plastic bean stack, you don't need any servers. You need to select which type of environment that you want to create your application. So I just click on create application. And here you can give the environment name and you can choose the platform. I want my application to be on Java. That is specifically I can go with uh, uh, Java 11 or else platform version you have to select here. And later on, you can go with the uh, database and everything. So it's very simple for you. you. Just need you don't need to install the Java, okay? So you just have to select it. For example, here I want the Python application. 
which version of python that you want to access so i will select the python so here i want python 3.11 and platform version is 4.12 so if you select this automatically python application will be installed on the server so you don't need to log in into the server you don't need to install that so this comes under the platform as a service so what you have to do here in the same manner if you see this diagram what they are saying so you don't need to worry about all these things like networking storage servers virtualization operating system middleware and runtime you need to focus on your application only application and data where the data has to be saved uh, how the, the database has to be constructed that you need to understand elastic beanstack is one of the best example for your platform as a service and when you come to the software as a service here they are not going to provide anything like you don't have the control over any application so in the on premises environment you will have the full control over the application but when you come to the sa software as a service here you don't have any control towards the application like your office 365 so you you want word word is given to you you want powerpoint powerpoint is given to you if you want any modification they won't do that like your zoom application so zoom application is also a software as a service they are going to provide the software you have to subscribe for that software and you have to utilize it so they are not going to make any changes in the software that is called as software as a service so the best example here is i can go with the cloud watch or else uh, sns simple notification service so here you can select the which type of uh, connectivity that you need to make which type of software that you need to make that's it apart from that you cannot do any any much modification so the best example of uh, software as a service is <clears throat> SAS is SAS AWS. So software as a service, <clears throat> is it? The best one will be leading SAS. So what they are saying, fully managed. Of course, they are saying that scalability. I just want the examples for that. Amazon Workspaces, exactly. So Amazon Workspace is one of the best examples. So it's an, uh, it, is, it is like an, uh, uh, what I can say, if you are having an email ID, you can create your own application or else you can have your uh, 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 computer account over there just log on to the computer account you can access the amazon services which is one of the best thing we will discuss about the amazon workspaces once we get into the topic and then uh, we are having like see that the frame need to provide the secure and scalable cost effective desktop environment for its consultants so now i am having a consultants all over the world okay so i cannot go to each and everyone and uh, ask him to have the desktop i cannot provide the desktop to each and every person so they will have their own laptops if they if they are having their own laptops i will share them the workspace environment so this is the amazon workspace you have to log into this workspace environment and you can have your virtual desktops okay so it's very easy for us so this is one of the best example for your uh, uh, software as a service amazon workspaces are one of the best example for your software as a service these are the different types of services that are provided by your uh what i can say cloud services one is on premises this is not a cloud this is completely purely your infrastructure and the next one is infrastructure as a service which is provided by the cloud where they are going to provide up to servers and virtualization apart from this you have to install everything and platform as a service where they are going to provide you entire platform just you need to worry about your application how to develop the application how to integrate that application you need to take care of that and when you come to the SAS, so everything will be handled by the cloud itself. You cannot do any modifications. So now when you go from left to right, from on-premises to SAS environment, what is happening here is the flexibility to make the changes will be reduced. From on-premises, you are having you are more flexible of doing the changes. When you come to the software as a service, you don't have the flexibility to make the changes in the application. So this is what we are calling it as an uh, <clears throat> services that are provided by your cloud environment i hope you understand this any questions here any questions Am I clear with all the software as a service? Like what are the services that are provided by the cloud? Any questions that you want to ask me?
no questions are you sure okay so that's about multiple uh, services that are provided by the cloud environment so next session we are going to discuss about what we are going to discuss create an aws account <clears throat> creating the aws account and accessing the aws account that we will see in the next session we are going to discuss a lots and lots of topics when we are going into the aws so just it is a warm up so be very cautious when we are discussing about the aws it is going to take somewhere around 40 to 45 working hours that might be extended somewhere around one or two hours also every day okay so that's it from my end if you have any further questions you can ask me related to the topics or else related to your uh, classes or else related to your sessions. Go ahead. So tomorrow also you will have the demo and uh, from Thursday onwards you won't have the uh, demos and Thursday onwards you will, we will begin the uh, sessions with the AWS. Okay, guys. Uh, so let's meet tomorrow session next exactly at seven o'clock and uh, we'll go ahead we'll uh, check out what is the networking concept and later on we will dive back into the aws things okay have a nice day and we'll meet in the next session bye